First question on this episode came from my guy, Coach Jay, and appreciate you being a Team Keep It Clean patron. He said, uh, Engraving, you do a great job with the channel and keeping Ravens fans abreast. One of the best in the business. Okay, so we, we starting off this episode with a lie. We definitely ain't one of the best in the business at all. Um, I, I do thank you for you supporting and thank you for being a patron. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, but it's a lot of other people that do a phenomenal job like a real phenomenal job the way they put everything together and the way they break stuff down but no I, I appreciate you though man but anyway he said for his question i think as ravens fans we should look at the potential threat of an andrews Duve, bateman and djax on the field at the same time i think it could open up the field for a lot to happen i would love to look at that and think about that about all the possibilities but will the ravens actually do that would they have them all on the field at the same time? That's a real significant question. And he said, his question is, do you think Roman will open that vault up some more? Uh, the frustration is real in must-win situations, and we have a 300-pound fullback record running routes. Don't get me wrong, he's a dog, but there's just a time for everything and everyone. What's your thoughts? So for the first part, will Deshaun Jackson, will he help and actually force Greg Roman to open up the vault that much more? I think he has to. because Simply because the Ravens clearly got him for a reason. They got him for a reason because, again, Bateman, Bateman's been out, and they didn't go get him as soon as, as soon as Bateman went out. They were just chill. They were like, oh, we ain't doing nothing. Bateman stayed out. They were still like, oh, we ain't doing nothing. Bateman was still out, and they still were like, oh, we ain't doing nothing. And now they went and signed Deshaun Jackson. They signed Andy Isabella, too. So I was like... <laughs> Okay, like, what? what is it? What's it going to be for? It's got to be for something, right? It's got to be. Maybe they like, man, <laughs> they like, look, hey, Lamar, Lamar been overthrowing. We know he got super, super strong this year, man. Lamar done turned, he went from shredder to super shredder. If y'all remember super shredder, y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, that was one of my favorite movies, Turtles Turtles 2, Secrets of the Ooze. Anyway, um, they like, look, we, we going to get some dudes that can run down uh, Lamar Jackson's deep throws Because man He been shooting these guys A little bit uh, So Andy Isabella Deshaun Jackson Just go get out there And fly Straight up But No seriously I, I think um, It Again they, they, they got Deshaun Jackson For a reason You don't just sign A 35 year old Wide receiver uh, And put him on a practice squad At this point of the season for nothing, especially somebody who's a veteran, somebody who had they had established themselves in the league um, throughout their career. Uh, so you don't, you don't just do that for no reason. So you have to have a plan in place, don't you? I mean, <laughs> I would hope the Ravens do, but hey, we'll see how it goes. Um, but again, like I said, we, we hope that this thing, that he can make a big impact. And if he can really help Greg Roman open some things up in this Ravens offense, open some things up, that would be nice. That would be nice. Um, and again, it's going to take a collective effort. It's going to take Greg Roman and Harbaugh giving the guys the opportunities. It's going to take Lamar hitting them consistently. It's going to take Lamar finding them, seeing them, and, and, and getting the ball to them. So it's it's not just on Greg Roman. It's not just on Hall. It's on Lamar, too. It's going to take the offensive line blocking, uh, creating time for Lamar to throw. It's going to take the receivers getting open. So it, it's like... Everybody plays their part in this whole in the whole scheme of things. Uh, we would love for there to be more people to make everybody else's job easier, but you got you got to work with what you got. You got to work with what you got and try to make the best out of it. Um, and as far as the <laughs> the part about Patrick Carr, ooh, Patrick Carr, he wasn't playing with y'all, man. Somebody may have put that little Drewski video. A Patrick Carr, Patrick Carr said no, they don't. Fake news, buddy. That ain't me, buddy. Ravens don't have me doing that, buddy. But no, Paracar, he wasn't playing, man. Um, but yeah, it. Uh, with Paracar, I know with him, they uh, they've been using him as an extra offensive lineman and as a blocker, and the uh, he he does a good job of blocking. Um, but again, like we said, it's it's just it's it's so tricky with Pat Ricard too. Because you have him on, that means you got to take somebody else off. Uh, so, and, and situationally, I, I, I completely get what you're saying. If you got Pat Ricard out there in situational football, um, yeah, he does give you like an extra offensive lineman, but it is one less weapon that's on the field. Um, so, it all, it all just depends, man. But now you, you just added an, another weapon in Deshaun Jackson. Um, so, 
We'll see how it goes, man. They just everybody just got to be better moving forward. Ravens are at uh, sort of a crossroads, it seems, right now at this part of the season where they're sitting at 3-3. Three and three. They have a lot of things that they've done good. They have a lot of things that they've done bad. Uh, and it's all equated to you being at 500. So now it's very important that moving forward schematically um, and uh, as, as the, with the players execution-wise, um, coaching wise, it's important that everybody really step their game up moving forward so you can get the bo the best success out of this team uh, as possible. Next question came from another Team Keep It Clean patron, uh, Nazarene. He said, what's up, fam? I laughed when you read my messages. Peace and blessings, though. Okay, so boom. You want a receiver, right? Cool. You want a top 10 proven receiver, right? Cool. My concern is this. Some of those receivers will want extensions probably during the trade, like a trade and sign, basically. You think I got a problem with that? I always say you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. You want to be cheap and da-da-da-da. Okay, cool. That's, that's what you should expect. You want to pay cheap prices? You should expect cheap results. But anyway, uh, he said, Robbie Anderson wouldn't be the player I would have traded for, so I'm just going to put that out there. And GMs are not going to trade an elite wide receiver that's still in his rookie contract uh, years unless they are getting multiple assets. Now, if we wanted an elite vet, then yeah, we can definitely give draft picks away to one of those. But why do fans think we can just trade draft picks for those type of players so easily? Seems like teams are not willing to give us anything and want us to overpay. Maybe I'm tripping, though. No, you, you, if you want to get a good, a real good receiver, like the, the Eagles would look with A.J. Brown. They traded draft picks away. They didn't trade no players or nothing. They traded draft capital. With um, DeAndre Hopkins, when the Cardinals got him, they, they threw David Johnson in there, too. But I don't really think that was really moving anything. But they gave away draft picks. So, th with the Dolphins, with the Dolphins, with Tyreek Hill, they gave away draft picks. With the Raiders, with Devontae Adams, they gave away draft So, you can do it with draft picks. You ain't even got to do player for player or player and draft picks to get you. All you need is draft picks. You can give those up and you can get that elite talent uh, at the position. But let's get back to the question. He said, maybe I'm tripping, though, but we when we traded for Yannick Nkakwe, we originally wanted Adam Thielen. Uh, they refused to give him to us, even though they barely use him. People saying that the Ravens want Lamar to fail. That's dumb. But me, I think it's the league that wants him and us to fail. Teams willing to give us uh, anything but a wide receiver one. Ah. And it's up to Ravens to be like, all right, because you, you really think 31 teams going to conspire against Lamar Jackson and the Ravens? I mean, anything is possible, but really? like, and, and when people say that they think the Ravens want Lamar Jackson to fail, um, I don't think it's that. I don't think, I don't think they want him to fail, but I do think that they don't want that price to keep going up. I do think that. I think they want him to have success for sure. Uh, Cause that means team success. That means more money for them. Um, but I think at the same, I, I think it's real tricky. Cause again, it's business. It's business. Um, and I just, I, I don't, I don't think that they want to pay him the money that he wants to. I mean, cause they ain't pay him yet. So obviously they don't want to pay him the money that he wants them to pay him because they couldn't come to a contract agreement. So it's not even like that's a that's a conspiracy theory. Or that's a rumor. No, it happened. If, if if they wanted to pay Lamar the money that he wanted them to pay him, this whole contract talk would have been a thing of the past because the whole contract would have been done. But it obviously hasn't been done. So, anyway, back to the question. Uh, he said, I got off track, but what and who are you trading for an, for an emerging wide receiver one on his rookie contract because they will want picks and at least one player? No, it doesn't have to be that doesn't have to be any player. You don't got to give up somebody just to get somebody. I mean, you can if you want, but you don't have to. It's not a requirement. Uh, and he said, and what are you willing to give up for a top 10 vet receiver? Top 10 vet receiver who's in his prime. Uh, not an older guy, but in his prime. I'm really going to give up a first. Throw a first, second. Throw a first and a third. First and a fourth. First and a fourth and a fifth. First and a fifth and a sixth. Like, fir first and change. I I'm willing to, straight up, man. He said, remember, we have 3.2 mil cap. Uh, this is a challenge to the whole Ravens nation. You can make a move with 3 mil, but multiple picks will be involved for a top 10 vet wide receiver under 30 years old. And an emerging wide receiver, one that's in the top 10 or 15, but in his rookie contract will cost money and players for sure. So which move are y'all making and what and who are y'all giving up? Also, just want to throw this out there. If Lamar signed that extension, he would have definitely had a proven elite receiver. Why? What? 
No, that's wrong. That's false. Reason I say that, you, you said if Lamar would have signed his contract extension, the Ravens would have got him an elite proven receiver. Well, you know what? Let me finish first, just in case you, you, you hit me with a swerve. Um, if Lamar signed that extension, he would have definitely had a proven elite receiver. That is why the Ravens are scrambling to make a deal. Hope you're enjoying your week and ready to stomp the doo-doo Browns. Keep up the good work. All right. So appreciate you. But no swerves. No, that's false. If Lamar Jackson would have signed his contract extension, Lamar Jackson would have signed his contract extension. He has been under a much cheaper deal for the last four years. And what have the Ravens done when it comes to providing elite receiver? Last four years has been way cheaper than this 23 mil it is right now. And what have the Ravens done? So that tells you everything you need to know. Like, Oh, because I, I, I can't buy that. Oh, if, if, if Lamar would have signed, because it would open up a significant amount of cap. But if Lamar would have signed a deal, then the Ravens would have got him. No, I, I, I can't buy that because Ravens ain't been moving like that already. So why would they move like that now? Yeah, this feels like a dream. So team keep it clean Welcome to another episode Of questions from subs And let's get into this next Set of questions From my guy Flirt Nowinski He said what's good bro I hope all is well With you and yours uh, And and everything is okay I think all Ravens fans Have bad hearts at this point uh, Let me just nickname us The pacemaker gang LOL But man The young the That young cover two match In every crucial moment Is so bad If if I'm a fan and I see it, I know people that are getting paid millions can see it. Man, we miss Wink. Well, I know I do. Uh, I feel as though we are spiraling down the drain. Uh, so what do you think we can do to bounce back? We can't do anything about our line not holding. But what else can you think of? I'm at a loss, honestly. Uh, as far as the defense, they, I think it's the, the defense overall is getting a lot better. But it's just the situational, man. The situational stuff is where they uh, seem to be falling apart. A little bit they, they just They can't hold it down Consistently Situationally So They they have been getting better Overall As far as giving up The big plays They ain't been giving up No big plays They have been giving up Some clutch plays But not big plays So They just gotta fix that uh, He said And just a note I'm so mad about McDonald and his calls Because it's so bad Every week It's the same thing Cover two match It will not work Without a pass rush Point blank period If you're a coach You coach your players You shouldn't run plays um, I cannot say this enough, man. Lamar definitely threw the game for sure, but man, I cannot stand watching us on defense. It's like common knowledge, but yeah, bro, what do you think we can do? I'm speechless. Yeah, a pass rush will certainly help. So I think the Ravens are just they hoping and, and, and banking on their own guys to make their comebacks. Um, and then go from there. And hopefully when Bowser comes back, Justin Houston, he practiced this week, so that's great. Um as far as defense, I think they just they hoping that their their own guys can make the biggest impact. Uh, he said we are a clear contender playing around. No we no way we sniff the playoffs, and if we get there, we are one and done. Uh, you know I love our boys, but something's got to give, bro. I don't know. I don't care about Bate being out. I don't care about Stanley on a pitch count every week. You see, is next man up. Patriots and Jets just won with nothing, nobody. It's no excuse that will change my mind right now. And like my playoff aspirations for us are right now, I'm out. Um, and then he also said. <laughs> He said, can I speak to the fans real quick? Between the live stream and ESPN, etc., please calm down, everybody. Takes losses. I've been a part of Team Keep It Clean for a good time now. And Graven knows I hated the Ingram signing. I hate we paid Stanley and got rid of OBJ. He knows I love Wink and hate that we let him go. But just because your opinions aren't the same doesn't mean you have to down people. Man, this is Team Keep It Clean. We are a family. And just like that, I'm about to say something that'll ruffle some feathers. Uh-oh. For one, Robbie Anderson is about to get traded. They sent him to the locker room, so that's good. Let me manifest and say welcome to Baltimore. See, I... Again, initially, when the rumors came out that they were like, oh, yeah, they're going to trade Robbie Anderson. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a Baltimore Raven. But then when that whole locker room thing happened, I'm like, yeah, yeah, it ain't happening no more. But anyway, he said, uh, I'm here. I'm hearing everywhere that we let's trade for a top tier wide receiver. But guess what? That's not going to change anything. We can have DJ Moore. We can have DK. We can have Debo. It doesn't matter. Roman coaches the players. He doesn't call plays just to call them. He knows our line is bad. He calls a lot of short stuff, which is cool. I don't know if y'all noticed, but the majority of deep shots are rushed with seven blockers. And that's a big yikes. Uh, do the same way. Uh, he would overthrow Duve because seven people are blocking. It's two free rushes. It's the same way where he will overthrow DK. It is what it is, man. Remember when nobody knew who Cooper Cuff was? Small guy, small school, absolute nobody. Yeah, that guy, he worked and it worked out. That's all it is. Everything doesn't have to be perfect and quite honest. Imagine if we had all these guys that y'all want and the same things are still happening. Uh, see, with that, 
I disagree with that. I, I disagree completely because I, I wouldn't want it to be like, um, cause you said, imagine if we had all those guys and it still happened. Okay. Imagine it, but we can't imagine it because we don't have those guys. Why be like, all right, let's, let's supply Lamar with less because we, we see with less that it has, hasn't gotten us over the top yet. Why not supply him with more and then really, again, really see, really see, get guys who have been reaching their potential. Not potential guys, but guys that have been reaching their potential, and then let's see and, and, and go from there. But that would be my approach. But anyway, he said, um, uh, y'all, y'all thought people are definitely uh, on Lamar. Good Lord, imagine if, we, if he overthrew DK instead of Wallace. Everything will break loose. But I said that to say it's somewhat early, less ball. Yeah, it is. It is well, somewhat. It's getting to that point. I know I, I appreciated that somebody brought it out in the stream the other day. They were like, man, y'all going to be saying it's early and it's going to be like week 10, week 11. It's getting there. So, yeah, it, it, it ain't really early that much no more. But anyway, uh, he said, bro, I don't like it at all. I'm sorry. Everybody says that we need that dog. Fights for extra yards. Can shake people out their shoes. Great after the catch. Shaking my head. D-Jax is going to deck it after every catch just like Hollywood. And here's the catch. No pun intended. That, that's what I said. That's what I said I saw from him. Um, after a lot of he, – he, he, like, shies away from contact. And it, like, I saw a lot of running out of bounds. Saw a lot of going to the ground. And, and But he's 35. So I ain't expecting him to come in here and try to run somebody over. He got a smaller frame. He's always had a smaller frame. Um, so I ain't expecting him to come over here and truck somebody. But So we'll see how it goes, man. Uh, he said, so let's just say we only send him on flies, a straight line, right down the field. Let's just say he runs a 4-3, which I still know he doesn't. Uh, it's going to take him four seconds to get down the field. And Graven, how is he going to get the ball? The line can't hold consistently for longer than a second. That's why every team sends it every passing down and every passing down in crunch time. So back to the question, how is he even going to get the ball? Uh, even young, he was never a through-the-middle type of guy. So the Ravens think he's going to be that at almost 40 years old. So with that being said, what can he actually do that's not being done? I, I don't want to be negative. But this isn't even a lateral move This is a step backwards to be honest uh, As a Ravens fan I am hot Sorry for the rant but really what can he possibly do For us So I, I mean you, it, this, this is where coaching is big uh, This is where coaching is big As far as getting him involved And yeah you can send him on all the fly routes And all the deep, deep, the deep routes down the field And whatnot, deep posts all that good stuff But you gotta try him in a short game too Try him in a screen game too uh, see if you can uh, really get that worked out for him, get him involved. Uh, and I know I did say screen game, so that's uh, when it comes to Ravens and the screen, you know, uh, yeah. But you, you got to try to maximize his time here. Next question came from my guy, Jonathan. He said, Engraven, I hope everything is going well for you and the fam. I, uh, it's a joy watching you speak about the Ravens and the NFL as a whole, but most importantly, the little tips on life. I appreciate that, man. Uh, but aside from all that, with today's game, it has been more evident that the Ravens need another threat at the receiver position uh, and really a guy who can make plays uh, consistently outside of Mark Andrews And with the recent talks of trading for DJ Moore Robbie Anderson, which to me doesn't seem like the Ravens are going to get DJ Moore Because the two don't even go together LOL, and, and a promising star wide receiver One, uh, so yeah, most Ravens Fans already suspect the Ravens would more than likely Trade for Robbie Anderson, someone uh, uh, On an NFL team practice squad Or someone on an NFL team practice squad Receiver, but I was thinking Lamar's a great football player, but just kidding. I see that Lamar needs a receiver that can make him go from good to great, just like Josh Allen. But I think the receivers that I, were reminded, uh, that I was reminded of from your videos from a couple of months ago came back up, and those two receivers are Odell Beckham Jr. and Will Fuller. Now, I know these are t two receivers. Are, these are two receivers who are injured, but you mentioned something. If we get them, we can see how our current receivers would hold up until they're available. Uh, speculation until they are available speculation are coming out that at least one of these two receivers will be available in the middle of november and i can see a scenario where playing out uh where or if we got odell and will right now that could take this they they could take this time to learn the plays and could possibly be plug, plug and play being that they would know the plays and fit in right apologize for the long message but wanted to hear your thoughts on it i wouldn't be mad at that if they ended up getting both of them i mean i, I do it in madden all the time and I do it in Madden all the time I sign both Odell Beckham Jr. And Will Fuller both to one year deals And they help out a lot um, But yeah I, I would never expect the Ravens to do that uh, But I, I wouldn't be mad at all uh, If they did do that uh, With both of them um, But I mean you bring those two in Who's the two that's going to be out Cause you, you ain't gonna have like no eight receivers on your roster. Uh, he also said, "Hold on, Raven. I got a question that I wanted to hear your answer on, and this may be an unpopular opinion. I would even go as far to say conspiracy. 
Uh, Ingram, do you think the Ravens did not make a big move at receiver because they want Lamar to prove with less talent that if he wants that guaranteed contract that he should be able to carry the entire offense with what he's got? I think that's a piece of it. I do. I don't even think that's a conspiracy or anything. I mean, the Ravens have already been doing that. They've been doing that. They, they've done bare minimum at receiving. It's, it's shown. It's clear. So I, I, I do think that's, that's the case. He said, do you think that ADC and Steve are leaving the deciding factor on how, on how Lamar carries the offense? If so, what's your thoughts? And also, could you see a scenario where the Ravens could trade for a Jerry Judy? Uh, I know it may be a far-fetched uh, to think that the Ravens would trade for him, uh, but is it? Uh, what's your thoughts on this? Jerry Judy still in his rookie contract, so it could be possible. Hey, that, that'd that be cool. I just I don't see them doing it. I don't. Um, I really don't. Jerry Judy, uh, big playmaker. He he be, he be having a drop sometimes too now, but he he's he's a playmaker overall, man. Um, I wouldn't be mad at it, but I just don't see the Ravens doing anything like that. Um, but yeah, like I said about back to them at the receiver position, like yeah, that's again, it's not a conspiracy. It's just what it's been. It's just what it's been. You see how the Ravens have moved and how they haven't moved them. Yeah, so you already know what it is. Next question came from my guy Rodell. He said, my guy, another sad Monday morning for the flock. Overreaction Monday, as I like to call it. This offseason, I said that I wanted us to, I wanted us all to come in with clear mind for this whole team and coaching staff. Six games in, this team is simply not good. They're not bad either, though. They are mediocre, middle of the pack. Now, we can certainly blame a lot of people for that, but I am here to talk about a few individuals. First and foremost, the engine, the head of operation, the poster child, Captain Lamar Jackson. Lamar has had an MVP season for three games this year and has had an average QB season for the other three games. Right. Uh, it's been a complete role. Roller coaster. Now, I'm not here to talk about this man's money. He will absolutely get paid, and he should. However, he literally receives 100% of the praise for everything the Ravens do. Unfortunately, with great power comes great responsibility. And simply put it, uh, it's time to hold him accountable. As I said, our collapses are not all his fault. He has had a pretty good season, but these last three weeks, he hasn't played well. Uh, in 15 full fourth quarter drives, we either thrown an interception or had a fumble on six of them. And a turnover on downs on one. It's no time for excuses. We all give him the praise and the glory. And we all say we go as he goes, right? That engine ain't starting. <laughs> I like that last part. But yeah, Lamar certainly, he certainly got to step up. He certainly got to step up, especially um, in crunch time. Uh, and the, again, that the like the pick the other day against the Giants, as that's that's inexcusable. You can't do stuff like that, especially in a clutch. And y'all were up. They, they were up. Um, so yeah, Lamar. And I, I know I've seen the stat that's shown his first quarter, the second quarter. Uh, then his third quarter, uh, in his fourth quarter, and I know fourth quarter, it's been like real, 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 real rough. But anyway, he said, is EDC and Harbaugh relationship that important? Harbaugh has certainly uh, made some questionable decisions and mistakes in the past, and we've seen them uh, we've seen this, them same hiccups throughout this year. I do believe he shall be in a hot, the hot seat, but I'm not going to call for his job. I will have a ask, what is EDC doing about this? These meltdowns and collapses have been happening since last year. And if you don't want to fire Harbaugh and you, you aren't, all going to fire your newly hired defensive coordinator. Can we look the other way? Now, I'm probably one of those lone few people that believe Giro is not a bad offensive coordinator, and I think he has taken a step forward this year and is having a really good year play calling, but he deserves some eyes to look his way. While it's up to the players to perform well, and they haven't, this offense performing well in the first half of games and collapsing in the second half is truly head-scratching. With that, I feel it's time that EDC step in. If you aren't going to fire your neighbor, let his best friend walk. If you ain't going to fire either, go get your QB a top-tier wide receiver now. Don't wait until the trade deadline to get a receiver past his prime. Uh, or that's been cut from another team. I don't believe it's an overreaction to say it's time for EDC to step in and step up to make a season-changing move. While we are 3-3, three and three, now's the perfect time. Either we go up or we go down. Whether it's a hire, a fire, or a trade, it's time. Harbaugh ain't going nowhere, like we know. If they were to fire Giro, what's going to happen? Well, well, what's going to happen? Because they will still have the same head coach. They'll still have the same GM. They'll still have the same owner. But I say all that to say they'll still have the same philosophy and they've been here done that to where they fired offensive coordinators in the past and we back right back to the same issues so i just if they they could fire Giro right now and so many people be like oh yeah da, 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 but they will still have the same philosophy until this philosophy changes then yeah he also said my guy uh wide receiver syndrome at quarterback i was just sitting there thinking about the ravens as usual and i have a million thoughts right now curious to know if i'm overthinking or something there we all know how bad i want a wide receiver and i'm sure the flock wants one too we also know how much we don't use wide receivers i don't totally remember but cbs put a graphic late in the second half and it displayed our tight ends having 100 plus yards and all three wide receivers having about 50 i believe but anyway while Giro has been a lot better this year it's the perception of the wide receiver syndrome trickling into the qb situation follow me ravens never ever valued wide receivers we literally just traded 
traded away our former first round pick. And while he requested for his usage sake, uh, Ravens probably would have lowballed him and let him walk anyway. Whether it's coordinator related like the last four years or not. Like the previous years, Ravens just don't use wide receivers. Don't value them. Don't use them. It helps the Ravens in long haul because with little to no usage comes a discount or sell price tag. Even when they acquire wide receivers, they are coming off the clearance rack. Now, where am I going with this? Uh, Arizona and Kyler. Uh, Buffalo and Josh, Kansas City and the Chiefs. Uh, these QBs throw the ball a ton in high-powered offenses. As I said before, little to no usage brings down the cost. Lamar is obviously the captain of the ship, and I do, do believe he will get a wonderful payday, but... Could this be the argument slash tactic the Ravens are deploying to gain leverage? See, so many people are seeing this, man. So many, I, I think more people are seeing this now than ha they've ever seen it before. There were people that talked about it last year. Uh, there were people that brought it up last year, especially in questions from subs. But now this year, like, people are really, really seeing this. So I, I just think that that's crazy. That so, so many people are like, oh, okay, I, I see what, what's going on. But anyway... He said, while we've been a top-tier offense at points throughout uh, Lamar Jackson's tenure, it surely wasn't from throwing the ball. I mean, even before Watson's big payday, you've seen you had a generational talent and MVP at quarterback. you also seen what these other great QBs have done when paired with top-tier wide receivers. Why not capitalize and go against your old-school philosophy to help your guy? Even right now, it's not too late to add a Curtis Samuel, Mike Thomas, Brandon Cooks, Jerry Judy. But I guess they figure let him continue to carry all the bags himself and we will just hold the door open for him. Man, oh man, am I overthinking or could this be something? And as I type this, Kyler got yet another guy in Robbie. Literally shaking my head, bro. And then a little, because he sent this on October 17th. Um, then a couple of days later, the Ravens, they added a receiver of their own. We need a spot. Next question came from my guy, Nicholas. He said, Angry Raven, first off, mini ran. I was watching your live stream and chatting with fellow Ravens fans during the games, especially because I live in Steelers territory. But when, we were, when we're losing, the chat makes it borderline unwatchable. Yes, I get frustrated too, but calling Hamilton, away, EDC, hardball trash for two hours doesn't help anything. I promise, LOL. Everyone is entitled to their opinion to have their voice heard, but can't we just constructively discuss the game and stop acting so salty? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. On to my question. Obviously, something is going wrong because we should easily be 5-1 and one at worst. And it falls partially uh, on coaching, which needs to improve as the season goes on. And as long as we get hot at the right time, our division is still 100% winnable with this team. One thing I think we need to improve on is our late game running. Thinking back to 2019, we would put up these 10, 20, 30-point leads and then just run the ball down that, down that throat for the rest of the game. Uh, that was our identity, and we would kill the clock, run up the score, and other teams were helpless to come back. Obviously, this is easier said than done, but I find that we give up on the run game way too early. And if it's not working, yes, Drizzy was doing great versus the Giants, but we couldn't get extended run-heavy drives going near the end of the game. That's true. That's true. And that's important, man, uh, especially if something's working. Especially if it's working. You want to, uh, not that you want to just, you want to uh, stay with it and don't do anything else. You do want to stay with it. And not that you don't want to mix it up. But if it's working, hey, it's working. If they ain't stopping it, then hey, they ain't stopping it. So you 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 want to keep going back to it, man. But anyway, he said, with the trade deadline coming up, I think the Ravens fans all agree we need a needle mover. I'm not talking about a fifth round pick for a 40 year old pass rusher with 12 career starts. Uh, Marcus Peters, Calais Campbell, Anquan Bolden. We've had four first rounders in the last two years. We can give one up or uh, two for DJ Moore, Roquan Smith, Deron Payne, a corner, a pass rusher. I used to be the mindset that our receivers were enough, but we need someone for those clutch drives to get open. Besides Mark Andrews, De defensively, we need a disruptor, someone who the quarterback has to keep their eye on every pre snap. Our D is consistent but it's not scary and there's no one to rely on that has that can make that final clutch play and that's what we need i love draft season but i'm ready to pull the dolphins and say forget them picks if we do we'd only be giving up pick 32 anyway <laughs> that would be the hope uh sorry if my question came off as a little disorganized it's more discussion prompts than questions i guess as always thanks for entertaining ravens fans throughout the wins and losses with a smile on your face <laughs> appreciate it man um well, looks like Ravens, they, they got that needle mover that you were looking for. Uh, and they got to sign him as a free agent. The most simple reason as to why the Ravens are failing. Next question came from Stone. He said, oh, man, it's going to be a long one. But first off, Engraven, I hope you're doing amazing. You're a huge bright spot in the Ravens community and continue to lead while other lead others in being compassionate while keeping it respectful at all times. Thank you for being such a great role model to many of us. Uh, but into the real question, I, I don't think people are looking at the Ravens' problems in the most simplest of ways. To make this very simple for all the people listening, what usually happens when you're up by 10 or more with one of the best rushing attacks in football heading into the fourth quarter? Usually the team tends to run the ball straight down down the field and waste time till the clock hits zero but wait 
Don't the Ravens have the best run game coordinator in the league? Don't the Ravens have the best offensive coordinator for running the ball? This one of the this one's the best. Uh, don't the Ravens have Lamar Jackson, aka the best running quarterback in the league? Hmm. So I think when it's put this way, it's very easy to tell that the Ravens' problem all come from coaching. These three points summarize the Ravens' problems, in my opinion. Number one, style of offense. The Ravens need to realize it's 2022, not 2000. <laughs> you could have ended it right there. And that would have been enough. But anyway, he said you can try whatever you want, but the NFL has evolved to a fast, big play, wide receiver type of offense, which is the complete opposite of what Greg Roman is running. You can't expect to win games when you have two tight ends on the field plus a 300-pound fullback that is taking more snaps than any wide receiver other than Bateman when healthy on the team while running more routes than 75% of all wide receivers. Uh, that is a great recipe for absolute disaster when it comes to winning football games. Number two, John Harbaugh is out. Do you remember when Ray and, El, Ray and Ed held a players-only meeting? Or when Harbaugh almost lost his job before he threw Lamar into the mix to save him? Wait, or when Harbaugh lost eight straight games in a row because of his so-called analytics? How about this? Instead of having to rely on analytics, how about the Ravens hire a real head coach that can lead a football team? John Harbaugh's message to the team has gotten way too old and stale, and we should we should have known it when Marcus Peters had his moment. Uh, forget those picks. Do you think the Rams regret going all in and winning a Super Bowl? Or do you think they'd rather have 13 mediocre seasons uh, that have them over 500 but only a few playoff wins? Oof. Mm. And not only, I mean, they they had, I mean, they weren't supposed to be there because that that garbage pass interference call or non pass interference call. Um, but they they had just been to the Super Bowl a couple years back too. So anyway, um, he said, let's be honest. No one wants to sit there and win games but not win a championship. Uh, the picks that the Ravens value so much really have minimal value. To make it simple, would you rather draft the receiver in the first round and hope that they turn into what you admire them to be, or give up the pick to get the receiver that has already proven what they are? I know what my answer will be 100%, 110% of the time. Thank you for reading. Much love. Yeah, man, that's, I, I, I agree. I, uh, yeah, proven, proven guys. And I know the draft, the draft is cheaper. The draft, you can save some money. Um, but the draft, I mean, it's, especially the receiver position, it's, it's been very shaky. You got Hollywood, I think that worked out for the most part. Got Rashad Bateman, and it's still super early. It's only been, this, this is only his second year. Um, and then he's been sometime being hurt and whatnot. But um, why not get a proven guy? It just makes sense. Next question came from OG3. He said, love your videos and perspective on the Ravens and the game and wishing you and your family well. I appreciate that. Uh, my only question is, what do you think it will take for the Ravens front office to realize they're stuck in the 90s and either clear out those who refuse to evolve with the game or change philosophy on offense? To me, it seems like after we won in 2012, the team refused to see the direction of the NFL and change. We're still trying to win the same old way we used to, and it hasn't worked out well for years. Do you think... Uh, under Hobbs, we will change our approach toward the wide receiver position. I don't. I don't. Um, I think they'll just continue to be the same the same way. Um, because, again, they could change offensive coordinators, but they would still have the same head coach, same philosophy. So I, I think it'll pretty much be a lot of the same. The next question came from my guy Kevin. He said, why can't Lamar get paid? Hey, Gravy Man, I hope all is well. What's the reason that there that Lamar don't have a contract? He's right there above these guys as far as what he's doing for the team. The organization has made this so frustrated in how they're playing this out. There's a lot of good quarterbacks out there, but Lamar is one of a kind. You won't see another as good uh, as he can be if he gets the correct pieces around him. In my book, he's up there with Ray, Jonathan Ogden, Marshall Yonder, Air Reed, Terrell Suggs, and so on at his position. I like to see all players do well, uh, just not when they play against my team. But I don't like to see players waste wasted in their prime years on a team that's not going all in for them. Oof. That was real right there, man. Um Yeah, I've I ain't even got no response to that. You hit it. Next question came from my guy Colin. He said, yo, what's up, Ingraven? I hope you and the family are doing well. I'm starting to think the Ravens do not want Lamar to succeed. The reason I say this is because they won't provide Lamar with the help he needs. You see with Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts, how their careers have skyrocketed because their front office has gotten them a proven number one receiver. This is why I think they don't want to see Lamar become his best because countless times they had a chance to get him a number one and they said, no, nah, we're okay at the receiver position. Now, unless EDC does something different, they are going to waste their chance by not getting him a number one in DJ Moore or OBJ when they are available. And yeah, it's, uh, it's about... It's about making it happen, man. The opportunities have been there. They ain't taking them. They've tried a lot of times, but it just they ain't been successful. Next question came from my guy Antoine. He said, what's good and great? Hope all is well with you and yours. I just need your opinion, and I could be really wrong, but I understand the Ravens really never invested in the receiver department, but I feel like the reason they didn't make a move on top on a top wideout is because of the money Lamar is asking for. And they knew if he had a true number one, then his numbers would go through the roof and his price would go up. <laughs> He said I could be wrong, but I think that's one of the main reasons. Let me know what you think. It could be, man. 
It could be. Uh, you said it. Hey, if he got one, his numbers go through the roof. Skyrocket and his price will continue to skyrocket. So, hey, man, Ravens will have to pay. But, I mean, Ravens going to pay one way or another, if you know what I mean. Next question came from my guy, Trey. He said, hey, Raven, uh, hope the family is doing well. Uh, appreciate it, man. As we know, uh, our need at the wide receiver position is far from fixed. Do you feel like the signing of Deshaun Jackson means the Ravens are no longer in the market to make a big move, such as picking up OBJ or trading for DJ Moore? Uh, I don't think they were ever in the market to be trading for a DJ Moore. It's just not the Ravens' way. It's not their style. It's not what they do. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr., um, I, don't, I don't think they would get him either. I, I, I really don't. I wouldn't mind if they did, but I just... I don't think he fits their style of wide receiver that they would want. Yeah, this feels like a dream.